So you got yourself a discount laptop, but you're starting to get that midlife regret once it starts slowing down and becoming unusable. In today's guide, we're going to go over some steps that you can take to turn that sluggish crap top into a halfway decent machine again. So today's patient is a Dell Inspiron 11 3000 series 2-in-1 laptop, which has a nice touch screen on there, and you can fold it and blah 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 But at a price point of $400, you're not going to get that much out of it. If we look down at the specs, they're kind of laughable. 1.6 gigahertz processor that can be turbo boosted to 2.5. Eh, 4 gigs of RAM. Ooh. 500 gigabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive. That's bottom of the barrel, bud. So, uh, yeah. Let's see what we can do to make this a little better. I'm sure even the most casual of you have heard the terms control, alt, and delete before. And if you want to become a power user, this is step number one, learning how to bring up the task manager. So on Windows 10, they hide it behind a menu. And I don't know about you, but I don't have time for menus. So we're going to learn how to do this the hacker way. Over here on the left side, control, shift, and escape brings it up without that menu. Now that's what I'm talking about. So if you're unfamiliar with the task manager, this gives us a look behind the scenes at what the computer is really doing in the background. So we have all of our core components um, in different columns, and we can use this to figure out where our bottlenecks in the system are. So another thing that we can do besides looking at the uh, task manager ourselves is to try and find some kind of benchmarking software that will rate how well our computer is performing. So in Windows 10, they had the Windows User Experience Index, which was a useful tool that showed how well each component was performing. So the fun thing with Windows is even though they might hide things, there's still ways to access them. I'm following a guide here that uses the Windows PowerShell console to force the system to actually run this Windows Experience Index test. And then after it finishes, we can type in a command to show what the results are. So by using this benchmark, we can compare performance to other computers, as well as a quick way to measure how effective our new mods are going to be. So once the test finishes, we can type in this second command, and this will actually get us the values from that index test. So one of the readings at the bottom called assessment state, it's important that that's a 1, that means that the test uh, actually ran when it was supposed to. So if that's good, we can compare these scores. They're uh, 0 to 10, 10 being the best, and see what systems are underperforming. Our total score comes out to a 4.4, with our underperformers being disk, graphics, and memory. So we'll keep that in mind and continue. Well, enough dilly-dally. Let's actually start working on this. So our first performance booster is actually going to be on the software side, getting rid of some programs that are just eating resources. So if we type in programs, we can get to this page here, which has add or remove programs. So on these slower machines, one of the biggest downfalls is bloatware. You know, stuff that runs in the background that just eats up all the resources and it's not doing anything useful. So a couple things we want to look through on these lists are uh, games, uh, especially really sketchy looking games or, you know, things that you didn't install or you don't use ever. Get rid of them. And the second one's a pretty big one which is antivirus software. So a lot of times you get an antivirus software bundled with your computer purchase, and there's a really good chance that you didn't pay for it, and now it's just sitting there in the background asking you to update constantly, and oh, your computer's at risk. You want to get rid of all that Norton, McAfee, Casper Sky, all that crap. You want to get it out of there. They are huge resource hogs. The built-in Windows Defenders should be good enough for your system, so you can just run that. And the third big performance booster is going to be uh, disabling some startup programs that you don't need. Every single program on here that's enabled is fighting for resources when the computer is booting up, and that just means it's going to take longer to start doing what you want to do. So just disable everything you don't need. And to finish up, we're going to check Windows Update and make sure that our computer is actually up to date, because a lot of times they actually have uh, updates that may improve the speed or performance, among other security features. So. It never hurts to uh, check and update, and then check and update, and then check and update. Now's a good time to, like, do anything else you've been procrastinating. We'll be right back. Alright, so, now on to number two. Time to look into the hardware this time. So we're going to figure out what kind of components we can put into the computer to make it just a little bit faster. 
So we're going to bring up the task manager again and actually look at it this time. Um, and what we're looking for is what systems actually need work. So things in the red that are pretty close to 100% are like always maxing out all the time. That's a good place to start. Uh, we can also look at this in performance mode so you can see things in pretty graphs if numbers aren't really doing it for you. So first up is the CPU. This is how fast the computer can actually do calculations. So when it's trying to run programs, this is how quickly it can run the program once it's loaded. The faster, the better. Next up is memory. So this is where programs store all their short-term files. The more RAM that you have, the more programs that you can be running at once without slowdowns. The disk is the long-term storage, and that's where all your files are actually kept. Faster read and write speeds mean that programs can get to your stuff quicker. And finally, we have the GPU, or the graphics processor. So this is what's used when you're trying to play video games and do other graphics-intensive tasks. On most laptops, this is integrated graphics, so it's actually part of the CPU, and they're not workhorses, so don't expect them to do much. So, now you know your computer just a little bit better. Great. So, how do we learn to actually upgrade this darn thing, huh? Well, my friends, it's time to go to Google. So find your laptop's specific model number and type that bad boy into the search bar, and we're going to look for a website called Crucial. So they're very big with RAM and memory, but they have a nice little thing here that tells us uh, the maximum amount of memory that we can put in as well as the memory configuration. So we have one slot to work with. That's important to remember. So the other thing they have listed over here is the storage. This is where all our files are kept. So the form factor is the biggest thing, whether it's a 2.5 inch or an M2, and the interface is SATA. Great, most of them are. So we're gonna scroll down and see what they have to offer. Since we only have one stick to work with, we gotta make sure it's a good one. We're gonna shoot for the maximum capacity of eight gigabytes, which is like the bare minimum. And we also have a stick down here that's a slightly faster speed, 1866 versus 1600. So that'll be the target one to look for. So storage is a lot simpler. We're going to go with the solid state drive, which is going to be a lot faster than the hard disk drive we have now. So the biggest thing is to just find one that's big enough to hold all your files. But this wouldn't be a crap top build if we didn't go for some budget eBay parts. So let's type in the fancy numbers and see what comes out. After hours of searching at lowest price first, we finally have what we need to load the parts cannon. Time to take this laptop from Assy too sassy. Let's do this. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to flip this bad boy over and we're going to find all the screws, every single one of them, and take them out. Get them out of here. After that, we're going to tear into this bad mamma jamma and go balls deep. That's right. We're taking it all the way off. Now we've got our access. We can find our RAM and our hard drive. So it's time to masterfully install those new parts and call it a day. Nicely done. Generally, the hard drive will have some kind of adapter that goes with it, so don't forget to transfer that over to your new drive before you install it. Now the moment of truth. If you didn't blow anything up putting it back together again, we can power it on and see what it does. Fingers crossed. Ah, crap. Well, this project just turned into a one-beer job, so crack open your nearest cold one and let's get started. Hop on the Googler and figure out what the heck we just did wrong. Ah, uh, yes. You know exactly what I need. So in case you forgot, all of your personal files are stored on the hard drive. So when we swapped it out for the solid state drive, there was nothing on it. And part of that is the operating system. So the computer is not going to do anything without an operating system. If you have a disk or a USB that has a, a system, you can do a fresh install. But what I'm going to do here is clone the hard drive. I'm using a free program called Macrium Reflect, and this is going to perfectly copy all of our files and the hard drive partitions onto the new drive, so it is an exact duplicate of the one that we took out. That way we really don't have to worry about anything. It's the same computer we started with. If the new drive is a different size than the old drive, you're going to have to adjust the partition size like I did, so make sure that you actually have a drive big enough to hold all your files. You'll also need an external drive bay to actually interface the new hard drive with the laptop, so you might want to pick one of those up. Anyway, now we sit back and wait, and wait, and wait. Plenty of time to finish that task you're procrastinating. So the system noticed that we changed the RAM. Oh well, don't worry about it. Let's continue. So the system might take a little longer to start as all the files get figured out, but anyway. Let's see the payoff. Was it worth it? So right off the bat, we're seeing read speeds of 60, 70, 80 megabytes per second. That's the power of solid state. That is nice. 
file transfers should be a lot faster now, and programs should load a little quicker too. We're also looking really good on the memory right now at only 30%. We got a nice little bit of headway there so we can run more programs without lag. All right. Benchmark time. We're going to run that Windows Experience Index test one more time and see what we actually get. A couple other bottlenecks to check. If your laptop runs in an energy saving mode when it's on battery power, plugging it in might give you a little extra jazz. Also, if temperature is an issue, you might want to get a cooling base because if you can keep it cool, you might be able to push it a little farther as well. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the payoff. So, was it worth it? Here we have our updated index score, and we can see that our disk and our memory improves. So now we're at 8.1 and 8.5 respectively. So we've seen a 2.2 to a 2.6 point jump. That's nice. And if we'll look, our total score is bumped up from a 4.4 to a 4.5. So our, our main limiting factor now is graphics, which we can't really do anything about, but we actually gained 0.1 of a point, which could possibly be associated with our new hardware. Awesome. Now, is this going to compete with your uh, next door neighbor's Alienware? No, not even close. But is it going to be maybe halfway usable in the current year? Yeah, you might actually be able to, you know, like, go on the internet and do things with it again. As a side note, this video was mostly just for fun and comedic relief, but please be mindful that computers are dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, so be very careful, especially with laptops with built-in batteries and stuff. You know, you could shock yourself or blow up your computer or much worse. So if you don't know what you're doing, you maybe take it to someone who does. So there you go. That's about the best we can do trying to supercharge your crap top into something that might actually be usable. Anyway, that's all for now. eBay man, away! away!